Father in heaven, we thank you for speaking freedom over our lives. You know the pains we carry in our spirit and how we try our best to deal with them on our own. But God, we're thankful that you desire to set us free from all the failures and the pain of yesterday. And so we trust you and we praise you. Amen. Today's devotion is Freedom to Start. Our verse for meditation is John 4, verses 23 and 24. But the hour is coming, and now is, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. God wants you to know that yesterday does not define you. Take the lessons and listen for your next order from Him because it is Him, the Lord of your life, who defines you. Listen to Him. Today's real life lessons come from the experience of Hormuz Shariat, head of Iran Alive Ministries, and founder of the largest Muslim convert church in the United States. While a PhD student in the US, he was exposed to the Bible and found the life of Jesus to be in stark contrast to his Muslim upbringing. He attended a Christian meeting in a church downtown LA. In his own words, That's where I heard this simple message of the gospel which transformed my life. Hormuz was eager to share his new faith with everyone. But not long after his conversion, his 16-year-old brother was arrested on a minor political charge and was imprisoned for two years. As a passionate new believer, he prayed God, please save him. And he believed that this God who loves him would save his brother. But one day, his mother received a call. Come, get your son's body. We just shot him. And by the way, you need to pay for the bullets. They charged his mother to release his brother's lifeless body to her. This incident seriously tested Homer's faith. And like many who asked God, where are you in times of distress? He pleaded and asked God to reveal himself. Hate and rage filled his heart and all he wanted was revenge. But as he wrestled his emotion, God appeared to him and told him, the best thing to do is to share the gospel with those who killed your brother. They're not your enemies. They're captives in the hands of the enemy. He records that this moment changed his life. He was suddenly free from the hate he'd been carrying for his brother's murderer. And this sparked a new beginning for him to take the gospel to his Muslim community. The Samaritan woman was intrigued by what Jesus offered. She said, give it to me. At least I won't have to come back to this world to draw. She paid no attention to the everlasting life that Jesus offered, but only to the idea that she would not have to come back to the well. Some may argue that in her carnal mind, she could not grasp eternal truth as she was focused on earthly things. But it could be that her pain was so deep and her anxiety so intense and it all centered around coming to the well. According to historians, getting water was traditionally a woman's duty, and women would go in groups, thus making it more of a social event where they'd catch up on each other's life. It was an activity that broke the mundane rhythm of being home. But for her, it appeared to have been traumatic. The most attractive part of Jesus' offer to her was that she wouldn't have to face this part of her life. And Jesus heard this. He wanted to set her free to live. He wanted her to know the words he spoke in John 10 verse 10. The thief come 
but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus makes a strange request. Go call your husband and come. This could be viewed as very intrusive. How did we move from water to husband? We don't know how long a pause there was at this moment as the thoughts of her past romantic escapades flooded her mind. She must have thought, this is exactly why I do not come to this place when people are here. The conversation always get around to the man in my life. And then she said, I don't have a husband. A short, quick response, probably very terse. But Jesus prolonged the conversation. That is true, because you have had five and the one you're now with is not yours. Seriously? Did he really have to go into all that detail? She must have wondered, what is this? And she just wanted to end the conversation, which felt like salt being rubbed in an open wound. But Jesus was not trying to embarrass her. He wanted her to know, I know you, and I still ask for water. I know you, and I still value enough to drink from you. I know the pain of yesterday, and I want to set you free from them. She switched the conversation to theology. Funny how it's easy to hide behind theology, but he pulled her back and outlined the fallacy of her worldview of worship. And then she dismissed him. Well, I guess when Messiah comes, he will tell us all things. And to a hurting, shameful woman, Jesus revealed himself, I am he. So now everything he said took on new meaning. She knows that God is love. She knows that Messiah was for all people and she recognized that Messiah sought her out for a conversation, that she mattered to him. Jesus told her that genuine worship was all that mattered, not the cultural practices, and that she was in the right moment to be a true worshiper. I am the Messiah and I value you. You are free to worship and I'm setting you free to enter your new beginning. There are those secret sorrows and pains that have through the years charted our life's journey. Yes, we've forgiven, but the pain has somehow become our guide. The times when we say we won't give because of what happened yesterday, or we will not participate because we failed some times ago. We may not recognize them as such, but these are minds that the enemy left in the landscape of our lives. But Jesus offers freedom. He gave humans freedom when he showed him that the enemy was not the humans who murdered his brother. And to the woman at the well who was being held captive to her yesteryears, the pain and shame that drove her to hide away, Jesus revealed himself to set her free. God has been revealing himself to us in many ways. He has shown us that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the one who has come to set us free. So let's shake off any remnant of bondage that still holds us. We are free through Jesus Christ. As Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And we say, Amen and Amen.